So this is the uh, Waltzons Japanese Type 10 um, Defence Force tank. As the usual functions you'd expect of these tanks, you have forward and reverse track movement, and of course we have turret movement. As of course have the firing. I've got the sound on this turned off. I'm going to turn it on briefly so you can hear it. Sounds generated by the sender unit, by the remote control unit, not by the tank. Um, when you drive, it changes. When you fire, of course, it generates a firing noise. Also has machine gun noise. Pretty kid stuff, really. <laughs> there we are. Now we're going to take it apart. So this is uh, held together by three screws. I'm just going to take those out. So there's the three screws removed and the two halves of the tank just come apart. And you see there's a cable linking the, uh, the turret to the connector on the circuit board and there's a couple of wires for the turret actuator. We'll just take those off so we can see a bit further inside. So now we have the two parts of the tank, top part with the turret connector and the lower part turret actuator. Here we have the uh, tank drive uh, motors and gearboxes and the circuit board with a connector for the turret. You can see there's the charge socket. Um, overall the construction is very similar to the other Aeroshima tanks, the SX tanks. This gearbox is pretty much identical. Circuit boards slightly different. There's a right angle connection to the straight one. It's very similar in size. Overall function and um, components very similar indeed again the uh, the actuator is uh, the, the same actuator there's any difference in that at all looking at the top part of the tank it's not immediately obvious how to go further with the uh, dismantling of this in fact this is very similar to, again to the uh, Shima tanks you can just about see if you look carefully that there's a, a split between the top half and bottom half of the turret and the two parts of the turret can be split. It's a little bit tricky. Take it carefully, take it gently, move it all around, um, don't do it in just one place and you'll see it's just uh, four pegs holding it in. So you can see here the, the four pegs which go into these four sockets here. I must say I don't like the way these, these things are uh, assembled it seems pretty unpleasant and tawdry to me that a couple of screws couldn't be used. Next stage is to uh, remove the turret completely. All you need to do that is feed the connector through this hole here. Best to just turn it on its side, poke it through, and we have the, the turret unit. I'm not going to take this any further apart, but you can see pretty clearly what we've got here. Circuit board, again very similar to the Aeroshima tank infrared sensor that goes up into the turret sorry the commander's cupola the commander's cupola has a removable plastic cover again this is identical to the uh, Shima cupola there's the LED that you uh, use in the battle system firing the gun um, and that's pretty much it the lower part of the upper chassis you can see there is a single screw. I'll take this off. It's easily done. And that's all there is there. On this piece, we've got a ring gear, which is 
I believe exactly the same ring gear is used on the Airshima tanks and that can be removed of course it's got exactly the same um, torque limiting system around the outside these small serrations and these uh, little dents on the springy pieces and that's it